So, this is Grandpa Jim, coming to you from Eretz Yisrael. This week's parsha is Parsha's Vayakel. And for the last few parsha, we've been gathering up all the materials to make the Mishkan. We've been gathering up wood and wool and grain and hides, and pasta, no, that's later, today. So, we're putting all these things together now in this parsha. We're going to start assembling everything. And you need people who know what they're doing to put these things together. They're not just going to happen by themselves. You're not going to just go point and say, Mizbeach! become. Shem did that when he created the world. Let there be light. Let there be fruit trees. Let there be animals and fish. And they happened. Because he spoke the word, and the word created the reality, and out it popped. But that's not going to work for Ben Yisrael because they're not Hashem. They're people. And people have to follow the laws of nature. So Moshe said to Bnei Yisrael, See, Hashem has proclaimed by name Betzalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda. He filled him with godly spirit, with wisdom, with insight, and with knowledge, and with every craft, to weave designs, to work with gold, silver, copper, stone cutting for setting and wood carving to perform, for, to perform every craft of design. He gave him a wise heart to do every craft. Oh, I, I misread that. He gave him the ability to teach him and Oholiav son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. He filled them with a wise heart to do every craft of the carver, weaver of designs, and embroidered herb with the turquoise, purple, and scarlet wool, and the linen, and the weaver, the artisans of every craft, and makers of designs. So these two men, the Tzalel and Aholiav, are going to be teaching everybody else how to do everything. Um, the Tzalel is the name of the best art school in Eretz Yisrael. Named after this, this great, the great artist of Israel. You know, uh, the, the, you know that uh, Aron Kodesh with the wings over it I've shown you in the past few weeks? That had to all be beaten out of one piece of gold. Take a piece of gold and beat that thing out of it. And this side has to match that side. Also, the menorah. The big menorah had to be beaten out of one solid piece of gold. That takes a lot of talent. Not a talent that a human being would normally have. But what I'd like to talk to you about is these two people, Oholiav and Don. Don is included in the list and uh, of, of people doing the teaching. Why did Hashem have two people to be gifted and to do the teaching? Why not one? Why not ten? Why two? Oh, for you um, older kids... Julius Caesar walks into a bar and he says, I'll have five beers. Think about it. You can explain it to your siblings later. So, there are our four sons being born prior to dawn. The first is Ruvain, and he'll get into some trouble. The second is Shimon, and he'll get into some trouble. Everybody gets in trouble. 
And then Levi, who gets in the same kind of trouble as Shimon, the difference is that Levi does tshuva, realizes what's wrong, and takes all the, the same kind of energy that Shimon had and turns it to serve Hashem so that eventually Shimon, Shevet Shimon, gets involved in some very nasty stuff out in the Midbar, but Levi, his sons get appointed to the Kohanis, to the high priest and regular priest. And then comes Yehuda. This is the tribe from which the king will come, from which Mashiach will come. So we see there's a progression here from lowly to high. And then the fifth son is John. The first four sons are all sons of Leah, who ends up having how many children? Seven. Six. Oh, six. And then each of the, and then Rachel has two, and then each of the handmaidens, Bilhah and Zilpah, each of them has two. So after these four, Rachel, who remember had stepped aside to allow her sister Leah to marry Yaakov so that Leah wouldn't be embarrassed. So Leah has the first four sons and then she'll have two more. And the two greatest sons so far are Levi and Yehuda. Uh, Yosef eventually will come along and and uh, do some marvelous things. But the next son is born to Bilhah. Rachel says to Yaakov, how come I'm not having any children? They have a bit of a disagreement on that point. And she says, okay, just like Sarah did with her handmaiden, take my handmaiden Bilhah and have children through her and I'll call them mine. So she, so she goes ahead and uh, sends, makes Bilhah to be Yaakov's third wife and they have a son whose name is Don. So Yehuda is the pinnacle, the top. Don has a sad history coming. Eventually, Don and nine other tribes will break off from Yehuda and Benjamin and Beit Mikdash, and they'll even set up an Avoda Zora up in, way up north in the territory of Don and say, "Come worship this, come pray to this." So why is it that in building the Mishkan? We have two names, from the highest and from the lowest. Well, the answer may come in something that we did last week, which is, in the last week's parsha, Hashem gave us a command regarding the ketoret, the ketores, the spices that are supposed to be burned on the incense altar. And the, the commandment there was that uh, you shall say, take um, there's, there's a list of, of uh, ten spices but the first three Stakte, Onaika, and Chilbanam, Galbanam now Galbanam all the other spices are mm, yummy uh, but uh, mm, you know I should smell it Get my nose closed. So, um, various spices. You go in the spice. There's stores here in Israel that sell spices. You walk in, it's like, pow! A whole lot of spice hitting you in the face. So, the galbanum, unlike these other spices, smells bad. You would never pick up galbanum and take a whiff. In fact, if you did, I don't think there would be a bracha. Because we don't make brachas over things that are unpleasant to us. You don't get hana, you don't get enjoyment. So the question is asked, why a yucky spice not only should go in, must go in, and if you don't put the chalbana into the other spices to be offered in the Mishkan, or the Beit HaMikdash, then it's no good. It doesn't count. So, we have a commentary on this uh, here in the uh, art school of Chumash. 
And it says, the sages derive um, oh, 11, so I said 10, 11 spices. It was offered twice a day, morning and afternoon, on the golden altar. The fragrance of the incense represented Israel's responsibility and desire to serve God in a manner pleasing to him. I guess the Galvanum, the Chalbanon, didn't overpower the others. So, it was a good smell in the end. One of the spices listed here, Chalbanon, had a bad smell. From which the, uh, the rabbis, the sages, in the Gomorrah, derive, learn, that sinners should be included with the community in its prayers. That the bad smell of Kelbana represents people who are doing bad things. You shall bring them to Daven to pray. In fact, it says in the commentary of Rashi on that passage, Chalbana, a spice whose smell is foul. Scripture, Torah, counted it among the examples of the incense to teach us that we should not consider it insignificant, that is, it's, a, it's an important thing, to include the sinners of Israel with us as members of our congregation for our fasts and our prayers so that they should be counted among us. If you want to get together and pray to Hashem as a minion, or if it's a fast day, you must have sinners. You must invite them and make sure that they're there. And a uh, fur further comment on that is it says in the Gomorrah and Chrysos, any fast in which the sinners of Israel do not participate is not a fast, for the Chalbana has a foul smell, yet the Torah listed it with the ingredients of the incense. So if you say, okay, let's, you know, B'nai Yisrael, we're going to get together and have a fast day tomorrow because there's no rain or something we need. However, no sinners may come. Then at the end of the day, you haven't eaten, but you haven't fasted because you have to include them. Who are we to say who is or is not pleasing to Hashem. We hope we are. And I'm sure our parents and our rabbis are. But somebody else, you might look at him and say, wow, he's not a very good priest, not a good Jew. Well, maybe he's a much better Jew than he used to be. Or maybe he's a better Jew than you know about. It's not our job to judge people. It's our job to include people. And if somebody is not doing what he's supposed to do, then maybe if we bring him along, maybe he'll change. Maybe it will change, too. So, have a good Shabbos, and uh, maybe we'll see you next week. Lihitra Ut. <laughs>